Hey guys, I guarantee you this is going to be an exciting and profound episode. Check this out. I finally have a real guitar. Um, you know what's changed? Absolutely nothing. I have no idea how to play it. But it sounds great. It's a steel body resonator. And I just couldn't stop with that. That wasn't good enough. So I had to embarrass myself even further by putting this pickup on here and I'll talk to you about that a little bit but listen to this sad now don't think I'm spoiled just by getting this thing I'm still gonna stick with the good stuff that we all know and love right all right this thing is really cool but it's certainly not profound Profound, profound is like this blue side, but I got something that's even more profound than that. I have a subscriber named Larry Lawrence, and Larry wrote to me and said, Hey, what do you do if your headstock material is too thick? We're talking about standard material that's available in, say, a hardware store or lumber yard, is too thick, and your tuners end up, I don't know if you can see that or not, let's get close and mess up the focus, but there's not much tuner sticking up there. So you end up with a short bit of tuner sticking up, and Larry's question was, how do you get this taken down enough for the tuners to function? And I imagine he's not talking about wearing out sanding belt after sanding belt on your belt sander. But Let's stop for a minute and get to the profound part. All right, let me get this out of the way. I, this is gonna be so exciting. I might just drop this stuff and lose it forever and I don't want that because I need it for this episode. Anyway, I want you to think about something. Larry Lawrence. Hi Larry, there was your shout out and your question, loved it. But let's talk about this, let's break it down. If your name is Larry Lawrence, what is Larry a derivative of? Well, it's a derivative of Lawrence. And I got to thinking about that. Is your name really Lawrence Lawrence? And so I'm thinking, you know, I'm Ken. And I hate to say this, but if you get on the internet and you start looking at cigar box guitars, you all know the minute you see a anything that resembles a junk guitar and they say can it's me right you know that now there's other things you don't know you get into like palm trees like this one on my arm did you know Tammy's real name is tomorrow which is Hebrew for date palm anyway you get in the world of palms and guess what you say can it's me they know me if you get in the world of politics like special education advocacy where you want somebody that's going to jump all over it and say whatever needs to be said to get something done and you say can those people it's me again you talk about charter school politics in southern california you type in can it's can and then finally there's school board politics around here locally so in town you say can it's me they don't know nothing about the rest of the stuff i got going on but the way life has worked out for me, even though I didn't try it all, it's like it's all can all the time. So I'm thinking, had my parents been smart enough or had intuition enough like Larry Lawrence's parents, imagine the cosmic, Kendra, you can stop laughing over there. This is real. You're supposed to run the camera. That's all. I don't need this. Anyway, imagine if my parents had the insight, given what I've turned into with just one can, had they been like Larry Lawrence's parents and named me Ken Can. I would even knock down Barbie doll Can off the face of the earth. Anyway, I want you to think about that. That's profound. And while you're doing that, let that settle in. I'll be getting to the bench so we can get to work on answering Larry Lawrence's profound question about making headstocks thin enough to accept these tuners. All right, guys, let's start at the beginning. Let's say that I go down 
to my local wood store and I get me a piece of something that will look like, hey, that would make a good headstock, right? And then I start looking at it and say, okay, how thick is this thing? Well, it's right at almost three quarters of an inch and um, a tad under 20 millimeters if you're using the metric system. Anyway, so yeah, that's good, right? No, wrong, because your tuners, you see here how this tuner is, it's got this part that goes into a hole and then it flattens out and it's got the screw right there. Let's put this behind here so you can see it. So it's got that um, mount for the screw right there. That screw mount, if you put it at the bottom, which shows where this thing would sit. Let me see if I can do this, like so. See, got that screw down there like, geez, like that. So we know it's flush. That's just not enough tuner sticking up for your strings right to Larry Lawrence's point. And so, what do we do with this? Because if I go ahead and cut this out like this, got the same issue. There's very little sticking up there. Okay, so I got a little shorter piece here that I can handle a little bit better without flopping all around. But you see what I'm saying? So, I got an idea. Let's go down and buy a little bit thinner stuff. Ooh, look, that's a lot better. Well, you know what? Um, they tell you a rule of thumb is that your headstock shouldn't be less than a half an inch. And that's kind of cutting it close right there. So, somebody has done this pro has dealt with this problem before. Believe me, cigar box guitar makers aren't the first people that built necks. So, let's look at what the professionals do. Hey, have you ever seen this one before? Yeah, it's the Bob Log, the third airline. Ain't that pretty? Look at that signature right there. Anyway, have you seen it? If not, I will give you a link to Bob Log, the third playing this very guitar right about there, right about now. This guitar was made in 1954. I think it's been through every beating it could possibly go through. And if I put this down here, it is about... Once again, I'm ill-prepared. Look at that. It's about the same as this one. This one would work. Uh, I'd like it to be just a tad thicker. But, is the airline the only one that does this? Alright, look at this puppy. Oh, can't hold this one with one hand. Look, steel body resonator. Yeah, I put a pickup on it. Um, I think you've seen this one before, right? Maybe at the beginning of the episode, but let's set this one down. What does Gretsch do? We take our little handy dandy here and push it down until it's flush. And then let's take this one and see what it does. Yeah, just a tad thicker. So, this board, if I do any sanding on it at all in the process, I won't make it too thin. Um, so, what is it we're going to do? We need something between this and, I want to make sure these are level, that and that. Which means if I take my pen, look at my nice little cobalt blue bottle, I love that. And I lay these down, i got to take about that much off of this board. So what am I going to do? Well, I got this thing called a planer. Looks like that. You're going to meet it live in a few minutes. Uh, but what this thing does is, this table here, this part right here, goes down and adjusts, and you take off, literally, wood from this piece of wood here to make it thinner. And you slowly but surely cut layers off and this machine will make this board the thickness you want now before we go tearing into it there's some safety stuff that goes with this as well as some certain conditions that need to be met before you kill yourself before we meet this thing that will literally take your fingers off and throw things at you and cause wood explosions a couple things you want to think about number one you don't plane anything 
because what you're basically doing is the equivalent of doing a quick sanding job to take off more material quickly and so um, the first thing is you don't run anything through that's shorter than 15 inches so let's say this was a rough board and I wanted to level it out a little bit well it's eight inches I'm not going to put this through next thing narrower than three quarters of an inch so I could I passed that test here twice but again I'm kind of looking at what would I be doing with something that's three quarters of an inch and do I want, want to run it through something with a whirling steel blade so again no shorter than 15 no it has to be wider than three quarters of an inch so you could actually run one of these neck boards through it the last parameter is no wider than 12 and a half inches so the machine I have will do something very wide that's not uh, what we're going to be thinking about here and then of course if you start getting longer boards like this way you're going to need end supports there's tables uh, that flop down on the end of this thing for leveling things out but we're going to focus on the smaller stuff here okay so let's look at this from a practical sense hey I got an idea I've already cut out this uh, headstock it's looking pretty good uh, remember in neck assembly line that episode hey link right up there see it later remember you can always tap that eye later on in the episode don't miss this important part to save uh, learning how not to have this embedded in your face or in your wall or in your car or wherever your bathroom shop is you got set up anyway Let's say I cut this out and do this and then I just want to run it through the planer and everything will be good and I don't have to worry about sanding it that much. Hey, guess what? Wrong. Why? Well, width-wise we're okay, but thickness-wise, well, we're still a half an inch. We're okay, right? That looks good, but here's the problem. It's more than a half inch thick there, but what about here? It's not a half inch thick there. So when the planer gets a hold of this, it's going to snap this shoot splinters out who knows what's going to happen and then another cardinal rule that we're going to be violating is remember the 15 inch rule minimum 15 inches well we started this one off at 10 again check out that episode up there but now it's about a little under nine inches so it's not 15 inches the width is fine the thickness up here but the overall length and the especially the thickness down in here doesn't meet the minimum specifications so what do we do oh hey before I forget I got an idea why don't I use some wood off a pallet I found at work or look at this one remember this one came from the canned heat house yeah I want to run that through a planer so I can have it shatter and poke me in the eyes yeah not good I wonder how many nails are hiding in here and staples and fragments of metal that are going to cause me to have to change out the blades on my planer and if I don't do that it's going to be really rough so if you look at this thing it would take forever to get this leveled out it don't use used wood like this it's not stable so here's what we're going to do we're going to keep this around do you see my logo up there yeah you have to see the logo it makes you buy more popcorn at the movie right so we're going to put this stuff off to the side and I'm going to show you what I've done here I have a piece of new wood. I'm going to put this over here on that box. That box is pretty fancy. Um, got a piece of new wood that I bought from the Topanga Canyon hardware store. That's got some significance. And so what I've done here is I've marked this off. I hope you can see. I've measured, remember when we cut our, going back to this, our headstocks, we're going to be doing about 10 inches or so and so what I've done is I've measured out plenty of wood here for two headstocks on this new piece of board that's not as thick as the three-quarter inch but certainly over the half inch and I've marked this off measured out where I've got two 10 inch pieces can you see there and there and there's the middle so I've simply taken and marked off use my square this is normal carpentry stuff there's the middle now I noticed that when I was looking at this wood it's splintered right here I don't want to feed that in to 
the planer. So I'm going to make a new cut right here on my chop saw and I'm going to do the same thing here and cut that piece off. So what I've got to take to the planer is actually a 20 inch piece of wood and that certainly is over the recommended 15 inch minimum but not so long that it's hard to manage. Let me get this out of the way. Now I've got a used piece of wood here that came out of a really cool old house but I've done the same thing here just a little bit different configured. I have measured from here 20 inches this way so I can cut a little bit of the end off over here and then I've done the same thing over here. You can see that there's two marks here and I've got a way to cut this here so I'll, make, I'll cut chop saw here then cut this end off here and then go over here and I'll end up with two pieces of wood actually three this one and two from this board that will give me two headstocks each so I'll actually end up with six headstocks out of this again after they're planed and everything. So I've met the minimum safety criteria for the planer. So let's hit the chop saw. All right, there we go. Check that out. We've got three 20 inch pieces. They all came out nice. These are again thicker than this one, but we have enough here to cut two headstocks out of each one. So we're looking at six headstocks here. Now it's time to play with this planer. Okay guys, this is the machine. Um, I kind of wanted to show you the whole thing before we get going here. Um, I love this little card I've got because it lets me um, move stuff around. If I got longer stuff, I can twirl it around and do some things there. I like that. Now, I want you to notice that right here are a couple of little set bolts. And that is because this table flips down like so. It's got one on each side. Let's adjust the camera. Because this is what supports your work. And so there's one on the other side and there's also a chute that catches everything that you can hook up basic vacuum shop vac size uh, hose so you can shoot your chip right into a trash can. You want to remember every bit of thing that comes off of here uh, is going to end up being debris around your shop and this thing will create a lot of waste and noise. So ear protection and dust control are a big thing. Here's your power switch. And the way this works is, up here is this crank and you turn this table up, you see it going up here and then down. And we're basically going to take our board here. Let me put this back down. And we're gonna put our stock in a little bit here. And we're gonna adjust this at first to where the stock is still moving just a little bit. We'll feel that till it gets a little bit tight. There we go. You see, I don't want to feed it in when it's that tight, so I'm going to back it off just a little bit. There we go. And I'll start my machine like this. Every time that I make a pass through, I'm going to grab it from the other side put it back through and then I'll take it down one turn each time until it gets the thickness that I want. Okay, I have a shop vac hooked up over here to the uh, discharge chute and I have this thing ready to go. So we're gonna run this through its first pass. I'm gonna turn on the shop vac and let's do this on a different clip so you don't have to hear all this.
All right, this one here is used wood. It's a little bit thicker. So I'm gonna have to set the table up. So we'll crank it up until this just wants to start going in there like so. And I've checked to make sure there's no staples or anything like that, but we'll just keep setting this down. I'm finding out that this handle up here, let's move this up here. That this handle, I'm turning it about a half to three quarters of a turn each time I make a pass, at least on that last wood. So let's turn on the vacuum and this thing and let's watch a few passes and I'll keep showing you this line right there. There it is. All right, that is a really good looking piece of wood there. That's gonna make a really nice headstock. Now, it started off just like the other one it was cut out of, and I hope you can see here that I've taken off about that much. Let's see if I can tilt this up. Yeah, you see there? About that much with the planer in a matter of minutes. So let me get this one wrapped up. Okay, this piece here started off like that thick. So let's see if we can lay that there and see. Yeah, we took that much off. Can you see there? In a very short amount of time. And um, when it comes to these other two, I really like the way this wood turned out. But again, they started off. Look how much we took off of that with a planer very quickly. And these are just a tad over a half an inch. And so we test them out against the tuner. We got plenty of room on those two. Looks good. And lots of room on the Topanga board. So, now all I have to do is remember to make these. We want to have at least 10 inches. So I'm going to measure... Um, to the center of these boards which is about 10 inches right there and we're going to run a square like so and what that will do is it will give us plenty of room to lay one of these here and trace this out we do that to all three we end up with six of these except this time they're not too tall. Easy money. Yeah, um, I know y'all are still trying to figure out that can-can thing. Yeah, it's big. It's profound. Don't worry. It'll come to you. It'll settle in. Um, if I'm not sad about it, you shouldn't be. Anyway, Larry Lawrence, I appreciate uh, your question. Y'all need to send me emails. Um, and I try to give you a shout out and get your question answered. Anyway, um, you already clicked like. I know you did. If you didn't, I don't know what you're doing. And don't forget to subscribe. Give me, uh, get, get yourself a notification. You don't want to miss any of this, right? Be part of the Ken success. Be part of the Ken, whatever it is, movement, whatever you want to call it. Anyway, I will see you next time. Mm -hmm.